Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how I switch out the front book in my planner slash journal system. So the first thing I do is to remove the gaffer tape from the spine and then I look for a good place to cut the book. Uh, I normally, I guess, I would remove the whole of the front book but this time I haven't used up all the pages so I wanted to keep some of them. So I kept the final signature in the book. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm cutting with a craft knife. I couldn't show you because I needed... <laughs> I actually saw... When I put the book up like this, I saw the light from the window through the spine so that I, you know, could identify where the signature, where the gap was between the sig signatures. So that's a tip. And now uh, I have removed the front book. And next uh, thing to do, I I reinforced the, you know, where I've glued the books together. So the final um, uh, signature that I've left in there, I, I reinforced the place where it was glued to the back book. Oh my god, this is so <laughs> uh, jumbled. Anyway, <clears throat> next step is to uh, remove the back cover from the new book, the March book that I'm going to use as my front book. Um, and as you can see, I'm also removing some embellishments from the pages uh, that will not, I mean, otherwise I, I would have to glue, glue it in and I wanted to reuse it. So I removed it. I'm just spreading out the glue here. It's ordinary PVA glue, wood glue actually from, from a local like hardware store. And I'm also removing the whole, like the, the papery part of the spine there. So of course, you try to press down as much as you can to make it to make the book stick together. And the finishing touch <laughs> piece of gaffer tape. I really love gaffer. It, it's the solution to all my problems. Just removing some excess tape there. So that's all the gluing and taping done, but there's more. I need to set up my calendar and all those things. My weekly, that I start with the weekly here, uh, just draw the boxes for the days, um, and now I'm checking my, my March calendar in the back book to just see what, you know, the dates. And I put the numbers of the week down in the right hand corner, and I'm setting up my week I did this on Monday when I started using the book, so I had to know what my schedule was. So that's the first thing I, I added. And then I also draw the two lines that the, the double drawn lines that I use as my uh, check boxes. Um, I uh, instead of making little boxes, I make this line and mark tasks as done in them. Next step, and I sort of did this the wrong way around this time, I cut off that piece from the, the weekly and glued it onto the, you know, the edge of the um, calendar page there uh, to draw the weekly boxes. Um, the reason I did this, because normally I would just glue the whole calendar page pages onto this spread and the weekly boxes would be part of that but this time I thought I wouldn't have a calendar there and only write my monthly projects I tried that and it didn't work so that's why I sort of did the wrong thing to begin with uh, here I am just uh, filling in the uh, the things I track at the top of my tracker and the tracker um, is divided by week, so it starts on the 28th of February because it was a Monday and uh, stops on the 3rd of April, which is a Sunday. 
Now, the next step, I am keeping this in because you never know, there might be viewers who actually like this kind of setup. So I'm showing how I um, wrote all my work projects in on the, uh, well, at the front of the monthly booklet there. But as I said, I didn't like that setup, so I quickly decided to glue in the calendar instead. Then I went to my next action spreads and uh, wrote in, I transferred the next actions I hadn't already done in February to the new month. And I'm using the same, um, same context as before. So I'm just transferring everything exactly as is, which is kind of boring to watch. So let's skip that part. Here at least we have something beautiful to watch while I uh, draw in uh, or write the uh, numbers of the days, the dates. Um, these are my weekly memory pages. And I write everything in gold because I love gold. <laughs> and it just signals memories to me by now, I guess. Okay, what am I doing now? Let's see. Oh, I'm continuing with the next action. So let's skip ahead. Uh, but wait, I'm doing something I should comment on, actually. I'm drawing the same kind of lines at the edges there as I did on the weeklies uh, because, you know, for the same reason, I use them as my checkboxes for my next actions. And I, after doing this for a few pages, I realized why am I drawing the line underneath the tab so that I have to, you know pull them off and reposition them every time I need to check off uh, something I did. So after a few pages, I decided, no, I'm going to put the line on the other side, which I'm doing now, because then it's not in the way or the tab isn't in the way. Okay, what now? Well, uh, I need to transfer... Uh, well, I'm I'm writing the numbers of the weeks in my weekly boxes, I think. Uh, well, not yet. Now I'm writing the numbers. I'm writing the big deadlines and the, like, the big stuff I need to remember and keep an eye on throughout the month, no matter what week I'm on in. <laughs> so I put the, the, the important things in those weekly boxes because they're visible from every page in in the monthly booklet, because I'm using Dutch doors. And the next step is to make a pocket in the front from the sturdy end page and the, like, the, the page that's partly glued onto that page. So I use my calendar page, the left, left one. <laughs> I glue it to the sturdy page and use that as a pocket for my ruler. As you can see, it's in there now. And here I had already decided that I didn't like uh, having, um, not having the calendar at the front and having my project list instead. So I wrote my project list on the first page of my next action spread. So I actually sacrificed one page um, and and wrote my projects there instead because it is it felt like a good idea to have them all uh, gathered in one place. I've been ill for a long while and I my life has sort of fallen apart. So it it's a good thing to sort of just have an overview of what's what. And so I I wrote it here instead. And when that is done, it's finally time to cover this up with a calendar. Um, and I do have another calendar. I have a duplicate in the back book, as is you, you may have noticed earlier when I filled in my weekly. I did that by looking at the, the March calendar in the back. But I want a calendar in the front as well. And... I mean, it may seem redundant to have two calendars that are identical, but the thing is that the front book, I switch it out every month. So when March is over, the March calendar will disappear from my setup. And if I want to check something like, when did I phone my doctor? When did someone send me this thing? 
I need to go looking for the March book and it's better to have everything gathered in one place, have all the calendars of the year gathered in one place so that I can just check things when I need to. And the reason why I don't only have a calendar in the back, which I was planning planning to at first, is that I've become so used to just flipping the book open at the front and seeing my month laid out and I just can't bear to part with that <laughs> with that setup. I mean it's so easy. I don't have to go looking and rifling through the pages. If someone asks, you know, what happens on Tuesday, I can just flip it open like a boss and tell them. So that's why. And now I'm just drawing the boxes for the calendar and I use, let's see now, seven times six boxes, I think. I mean, I, I draw the boxes so that the, um, I have room for eight boxes in a row horizontally and five boxes vertically because I mean there are seven days in the week but I have my weekly box as well so that's why I need eight boxes and now I'm filling in all the dates with the right color so turquoise for February pink for March and eventually green for April and then I simply add all the stuff from the back calendar to the front calendar to make it identical. Um, and normally I would have done this beforehand so that, you know, on Monday when I started using the book, I wouldn't have had to do it then. Uh, but as I said, I was planning to um, uh, list my projects there instead, so I hadn't done it. So then I had to sort of hurry up and do it before I started working. Okay, so this is just, you know, uh, rewriting information, nothing here to see. Just the final touch on the calendar, which is to highlight all the time-specific stuff in yellow so that I can see at a glance when I have meetings and things of that nature. So that's my March book all set up, but what about the February front book that I cut off? Well, I since uh, I'm going to glue it onto the January book, I start by removing the front cover because I won't need it. I will that will be that part will be glued onto the back of the January calendar. No, the January <laughs> planner book, monthly book. So I also removed the back cover of the January book, which is this blue one that I'm uh, butchering right now. Uh, it takes some doing because I've written on the actual like back page, the inside cover. So I don't want to lose that. So I had to rip it off carefully. And I will glue those two like cardboardy pages together with my trusty old PVA glue. And I use a lot of glue for this because, you know, this is a final, final step. I won't cut them apart anymore. This is their final resting place together with each other. So January and February make up one tome of 500 pages. And of course, I have to also glue the back cover onto the back of... So this was the January back cover to begin with, and now it's the February back cover because I've added February into the mix. And final, final touch <laughs> is the gaffer tape. That holds it all together even better. Look at that. Wonderful. And remove some excess glue. And now it's a day later and I have my two new books. This has been sitting under, um, well, like a, a heavy box, just to make sure it sticks together. So let's see, I haven't opened this yet. Ah, look at that. So this is the final uh, January spread and here is the first. February spread and it's 
cracking a bit, but you know, I think it will um, it will uh, hold together. Um, I realize now that I didn't cut off the papery part of the spine here, so I could just remove the gaffer and actually, let's see. <laughs> this is like a coda, you can switch the video off now if you're not interested, but I think it will look better if both of the paper spines are gone and there's just gaffer to keep it together. Let's see. Snip, snip. There we go. And <laughs> you can see how the pages I've dyed blue have been dyed all the way to the spine. This is not, it's not perfect, you know, it's, hmm, wait. I actually think it's because I didn't cut off enough from the back cover, because it's sort of, I don't know, it, it's, it's in the way of the gaffer. Nothing must be in the way of the gaffer. Gaffer is king. I mean, I could also make a beautiful spine, like with some, or a beautiful cover because this is kind of dull. I could make uh, a fabric cover to cover all of this. Um, I might actually do that. Hmm. But that's a craft project and I'm not going to do that today. So this is the finished, uh, archived January and February books and here is my March one.